the more developed somebody becomes, and when they become, when they get to elite levels of strength, the lines of progress between strength and muscular size are almost exactly the same. So eventually, size and strength are the same thing. But that's not how it starts out. Hi, my name is John Jaquish. I'm a doctor of biomedical engineering, which gives me a very unique perspective on all things sports science, some medical type things, nutrition, peptides, hormones, all that stuff. The things that you can affect about your life and use to dramatically improve your life if applied correctly. So today, I want to talk about how many sets of resistance exercise you need. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is there's a lot of confusion. And there's studies coming out all the time that seem like the story changes. Now, that's not the way science works. The story doesn't necessarily change. It's just new studies come out. And sometimes new studies are like a meta-analysis where they look at a whole library of literature and try and determine what that group of studies came up with or if they can use statistics to sort of merge these findings all together to get a more definitive answer with more a greater sample size and more knowledge as opposed to less. The talking points around volume, a lot of exercise volume discussion comes from the bodybuilding community. And that's definitely been the way the majority of bodybuilders have approached their, if you want to call it a sport, and unfortunately, that's really not how any other athlete on earth trains. Let me explain the differences. Where, where we have bodybuilders, like they're doing typically as many sets as they can possibly squeeze into their s- schedule for whatever body parts they're training, which is usually all of them. Like there was a paper recently that said 50 plus sets for quadriceps is uh, still indicated for positive growth trends. Now, the way that works is if you look at the curve of where you're getting your gains, it kind of comes up and flattens out. So, you know, by the time you're at 50 sets, the line is almost flat. So, you know, let's say on this axis, you're looking how many sets there are. There's a point where you get to what would be called diminishing returns. So you're doing more sets, but there's very incremental potential progress that you're making. Also, to throw you yet another curveball, muscle growth tends to be different as it goes with volume. Now, there's another caveat to that, which I'll get back to. So volume tends to have more of an effect on muscle size as opposed to just going for strength. However, this is one of the problems that we have when looking at studies with beginners. So when you look at beginners, there's not a lot of correlation between muscular size and muscular strength. The more developed somebody becomes, and when they become, when they get to elite levels of strength, the lines of progress between strength and muscular size are almost exactly the same. So eventually size and strength are the same thing, but that's not how it starts out. Beginners will respond better to higher exercise volumes. This is something I did not know earlier on. And, but however, you still get the greatest effect from the first set. That's where you get the most growth. The second set still a significant amount, much less than the first. And then like when it comes to strength training, you get very little out of the third. Whereas when it comes to muscular size, you get some out of the third and then some out of the fourth. And generally per on a per workout basis, we see between nine and 12 sets per muscle group to be the most advantageous for building muscle size. Now, remember, that's for beginners. And then still two sets optimized for strength. Now, for strength, you also want to train to momentary muscular failure. You want to train to the point where the muscle shuts down. For muscular size, 
that has not been the trend. In some studies, have people using momentary muscular failure as their stopping point. But what is much more common in bodybuilding is what's called volitional failure, which means you just decide when you're worn out and then you put the weight down, which is really not momentary muscular failure at all. And the less experience somebody has, the worse at judging where their potential muscular failure is. So you run the risk of having a really lousy set because the likelihood, especially if you're starting, the likelihood of you putting the weight down well before you've taken the muscle to enough exhaustion to really count as a good set, you don't really know. This is one of the benefits of variable resistance because you can train with variable resistance. So if I'm doing a full range movement and then all of a sudden I can't get to the top anymore because the further away, the higher the weight. So let's say I'm doing 400 pounds at the top. I can't get there. Now I'm doing 350. Okay. I can't get to 350 after three more reps. So now I'm doing 300 and now I'm doing 250. So you, you diminish the range based on what your maximum capacity is. So with variable resistance, you get the benefit of going to momentary muscular failure. You can truly go to it. And then you can continue with lengthened partials. So partials where the the target muscle is more lengthened. That's what they call it that. And then you can continue to do more repetitions and compound that fatigue. So I know what you're thinking. Well, Dr. J, what does that mean in counting sets? Because that just seems like a total curveball. Fortunately, we've got a study for this. Dr. Sean Conley put together with his his group, uh, Team Rehab, out of, can't remember the name of the city in Michigan. Well, he has a couple locations in Michigan. So these uh, Team Rehab in Michigan put together this study that compared regular weight training. They had a cohort of regular weight training, which did the ACSM's programming for hypertrophy. So the American College of Sports Medicine has sort of a set of what you would do for your workout for higher volume and focusing on muscle hypertrophy. So we wanted people to do that. And then we had another group just doing one set per workout per muscle group. The body split between push and pull. This is like the standard X3 program. So, so what we learned with X3 and or just variable resistance and diminishing range is one set of that seems to equate to three sets of regular weightlifting provided you go to absolute momentary muscular fatigue in all sets. You can basically exercise only about 30% of the time that you would normally exercise with free weights with variable resistance. So massive time savings, but also there's there's another it, it's sort of... Uh, it's not a curveball, but just a, an important issue. You get to do more sets with a fresh muscle and those sets are more taxing. You're winning on both ends and you're saving a ton of time. When it comes to variable resistance or, and of course, the ultimate with variable resistance is the West Side Barbell X3 Academy. When we have West Side Barbell, running this programming. So it'll be the same workout four days a week. So you end up doing sets of the same exercise four days a week. And you think, well, wouldn't I want to wait longer to wait for the muscles to recover? Turns out that higher exercise frequency, meaning the more often you do an exercise, is actually better than doing a whole lot of sets in one exercise experience and then like shifting to another muscle group and didn't doing a whole lot of sets for that. So like, for example, you could do a full body workout every day and you'll get a lot more out of that than if you divide the body up. And, and this is how like athletes train. And of course, Westside Barbell works with the NFL and a lot of professional sports. So they've got that all figured out. And of course, there is some crossover because Westside Barbell has the background in, in powerlifting and a lot of guys who are interested in powerlifting are also interested in bodybuilding. 
And it's these funny conversations all the time, like, well, you know, what's the split? And it's like, there is no split. Just you do all the movements. Now, uh, the w- West Side Barbell also applies what's called the conjugate method, which certain times of the year, you're going to do certain things and then you're going to shift towards other things. So uh, like, you know, you'll do dynamic jumping for one month and then you're going to shift to something else. But you're always looking to improve different aspects with the West Side Barbell program. So, so sometimes it's getting the body to be able to recruit more musculature. So you just focus on that for a month and then you go back into a more strength type set of exercises for that group that you've been potentiating the previous month. So you're always improving something, but going back to the idea that it's more important to hit the muscle multiple days as opposed to just having one day where you're going in on one muscle and just doing a ton of sets because the the term that's used in the industry is junk volume. So exercise volume is not really doing anything for you. Like you're just beating up on the muscle and probably just prolonging your recovery and not actually stimulating anything. So you want to avoid that. When you're using variable resistance, remember, especially with the diminishing range, one set really counts like three sets. That's that's the way that equates. And there's a, a couple ways that we can demonstrate that. But uh, Dr. Conley's study was phenomenal. Uh, and that's how we know what we can get with variable resistance. We can cut down on the volume, increase the intensity, get a better result with less exhaustion, leaving more in the tank for all the other things you have to do that aren't aimed at building muscle. I hope this helped. If this video helped you, I want you to subscribe and follow. I'm gonna put out videos on a regular basis. I think they're gonna help a whole lot of people, especially if you're one of those people that doesn't just instantly grow from lifting regular weights. We've got the answer for you.